All I'm gonna say, I want to make it through this whole video without crying because I don't know if y'all know how it feels to feel like you sitting on like a rotten egg and it's just stinking up your entire existence but you can't get off the egg you can't throw the egg away and you just stuck with it like literally since maybe late March of April of 2019 I have had this weight on me that I couldn't discuss I couldn't t talk about because I thought people thought I would be crazy I didn't think they would believe me Now I feel like, I kind of feel bad because I feel like maybe if I would have spoke up sooner, more people would have been aware, less people would have been hurt. The whole situation is just absolutely, it's just, like I literally... Let me just start from the beginning. That's the best thing I can do. And I know y'all don't like long videos, but I have to start from the beginning because you see, this is 2020 and I have to free myself from this and let it go for the sake of my insanity, the sake of this channel, I have to let it go. So why don't I just start from the top? Now keep in mind, I can't say anything because at this point, everybody will be going on about, oh, you just jealous. You just trying to start um, drama and gossip because everybody at this point was worshiping him. I guess the best place to start is at the top. So how I know lips is we grew, we grew up in the same town and we went to high school together. I think he moved around when I was in about the ninth grade. Um, we became like literally best friends when he was dating my cousin and I was dating his best friend. After that, I can't tell you what happened to him in school, but I was a grade or two ahead of him. So, um, yeah, I didn't keep up. I had my own, you know, I had my own issues I was dealing with from being bullied or whatever. So I really just didn't keep up. So then um, I never knew what happened to me in life. Excuse me. Then one day I'm scrolling YT and my friend Face Squad had posted a video. And I looked at the video and I didn't think it was him because when I met him, he was he was he was dating women so i didn't think it was him so um i watched the video and i rewinded it back slowly and i was like that is him that's my classmate of course i called him by his government name because that's what i knew him about i was like that's him i'm gonna call him lips for you know because that's what y'all know him as and i don't dox people or expose people so anyway um yeah so i'm like Oh my God, I reached out to him. So I reached out to him on IG. And we, I was like, do you remember me? Blah, blah, blah. We started talking or whatever. And we quickly, like, started back. The friendship started back. We started being friends or whatever. But I was getting to know the new lips because, you know, um, like I said, the last I known, he was, he was straight. So, you know, I was just getting to know him, all that kind of stuff again. And... Or whatnot. So this was, I think, March. So all this happened in March. 
um, early March, mid March, somewhere around about the third week of March is when all of this started happening. Okay, so our friendship has started back. We, we're friends. We're talking. The first thing he, he tells me about, you know, what, and I tell him what I felt about his YouTube. Like, I thought at first that maybe why he started, but I watched his content or whatever. And then he told me why he started his channel. He started his channel because somebody he was close to liked to watch mukbangs. So he basically had got into mukbangs that way. And he was watching everybody in the mukbang like these big moot bunks and studying them before he even started his channel. He was studying them, basically learning they move, how they style, learning everything about views and everything. Because he's the type of person, like he says, if I want to do something, I'm going to succeed at it and be great at it. I'm a master. I'm going to conquer it. And so forth. always has it he always be like you know you know leave me the water i'll drink i don't need you to hold my hand or whatever just leave me to the water i can drink by myself he got that little sand or whatever so when it came to youtube i started telling him you know he was like i reached out to uh he started just naming off all, all these big youtubers that he had started messaging like i think i'm just trying to recall some of the names of big youtubers he he was just telling me he was going to message and stuff for collabs. And keep in mind, when I met him, he, he only had two videos when I met him. And... He, I think he, he was reaching out to everybody that was big and... Basically, the first question was, do you know Beloved's life? And my answer was, oh, she's sweet. I, um, I don't know her personally and, um... But I've been following her. We um, kind of met at when she was at 500 subscribers. We was in a few of the same groups on Facebook. And we slowly started growing together. But, you know, I messed my channel up because I was doing too many things. I didn't have a niche or whatever. And um, she's real sweet, blah, 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 blah. And I was like, but yeah, uh, but I don't know her nor. So I guess out of the gate, I didn't even know. And realized at this point that, okay, what he's looking for was his way in. Though I still provided him a way in, I didn't know at the time that's what I was doing. <sighs> I provided him a way in by introducing him to everybody. And because everybody knew and trusted me, they thought he was a trustworthy person so they embraced him into the community and entrusted him we continue to talk and when we first met i should the first read the first warning side i should have he did warning to when he was he said something along the lines of now let me be honest when we was in school you had a crush on me no god that's when i had to remind him that I was dating his best friend. He's not my type. I don't do jiggly booty guys. And I don't do big lip guys. Because the lips are just disgusting to me. I don't judge him personally. But as far as a person I'm going to be with. It's no. I just don't. It's a family trait. Uh, <laughs> you better talk to my family. Time go on. So he telling me all these people he done emailed and, and what he was sending the email. And I said, well, that's not YouTube etiquette. That's kind of like not how YouTube work. Like if you like somebody, you genuinely like somebody. We kind of don't go around and look at people's numbers and then email and message them that to a, a email on to that degree. Like when he was in people comments and when he was messaging people he was just like real aggressive and i told him i said you too aggressive you gonna have to fall back you don't you can't go at people like that it's gonna be taken the wrong way and if you sincerely like this people they not gonna see it the whole time i'm thinking that these people he was messaging i'm thinking he sincerely liked these people i'm thinking he really 
that's what it was about for him. Like that he really, really was liking these people. And that wasn't the case. All it was about was their numbers and for him to grow. So that's all it was about for him was him just wanting to grow. The whole time though, I'm thinking he sincerely liked these people. So I'm telling him how he should be talking to people in their comments, how that he should be addressing people, even telling him things to say if he really liked people. So the whole time I'm, I'm advising him on how to comment and in this type of thing, I had no idea he didn't genuinely like the people. It was just about their numbers. I never would tell him what my numbers were because I didn't care to discuss my numbers. After I got hit by the purge at the beginning of 2019, I didn't want to talk about my numbers. I didn't care to discuss my numbers because for me to work as hard as I was to get up as high as my numbers got and then for it to be taken, I didn't want to talk about my number because I was dealing with that, like trying to bounce back and grow from that. So we keep talking we the friendship is going on and on the first instant okay so let's get to the second instant the, the things with the friendship being shaky so here we are by this time we hit in april right so the issues we was having ongoing and the, the friendship was was he would say things to me like he jealous because I put my husband first. What? It's my husband. I'm supposed to put him first. And then he would say like, well, I'm jealous that your husband get all your time and attention. I need help with, with this. I, you know, um, I need you to look at this, look at that. Because like when his videos would go up, like we would go over his thumbnails. I, I told him how to edit his thumbnails to make them pop, make the color pop, make them look better. Told him, you know, you need to get lighting, um, that kind of stuff. Just trying to coach him and teach him along the way because that's, I'm a friend and that's what friends do because I'm, I just care, you know what I'm saying? And so that's what I was doing. And, and it just kept going. And then, so I started noticing like, you know, this is getting a little aggressive. Like, I would say I have to go to work. Even though my dad is one of my patients, I can't be on the phone right now. I really have to sit by him because my dad was fighting multiple my myeloma. And he, at that time, at the beginning of 2019, he was was not, um, still wasn't all the way in a good place. Like we still doing radiation. We still doing chemo. Things was still rough. Like, we had just come out of doing a, um, was it the beginning of, was it October? Just come out of doing a stem cell trans, uh, transplant. I had been living in a hotel, like in a resident inn for a month with my dad and mom, carrying him, because that's where the cancer center was we had to go to. And, you know, I was just now trying to get my life back. Like I hadn't been in my house, hardly been in my home in the whole year. Like my husband had been coming to the, well, you know, back and forth to the hotel with me. We was um, basically almost staying at my parents' house, making sure my dad was all right. So when I got home, I had to get my house in order to the point I started pulling floors, repainting. No, he didn't want me to do that. Do that. He wanted me to spend my every waking minute talking to him. So I would tell him, I don't be sleep, like I don't go to bed early, I don't be sleep, but I don't be on the phone. Like I, I'll text you, I'll text, but like I don't talk on the phone because my husband be sleep. And our thing is, cause my husband works seven days a week. So our thing is like, we go to bed together. Even if we not, either one of us is sleep, we go to bed together. Like our cuddle time is our cuddle time. Even if the other one is just watching TV, cause that's just how we sleep. We, the, uh, one can't sleep without the other one. That's, that's our thing. So I'm like, if I'm woke or whatever, I can text you, but I just can't talk. He would purposely keep um, call. If I tell you don't call or and text me, why are you going to call? 
he expected for me to stay up all night because he all night. He just was really selfish with your friendship. Like bad, bad, bad selfish. During the whole time about friendship, he would ask me questions about other YouTubers. Like, what do you think about this person? What do you think about this person? What do you think about this person? Um, he would say stuff like, oh, poor Eat with Eats with Fifi. She upload four, five, three, four, five times a day. I said, yeah, I think she uploads each, each meal because she's being consistent. That's what, a lot of people do that when they're trying to go. They'll upload like each meal that they eat to be consistent, be consistent or whatever. I was like, you don't watch her. I watch her. Um, I said, I don't watch every video she uploads. I said, because it, um, it, it's a lot for for me to watch just that one person because I follow so many people that I try to support. I said, but yeah, I watch at least one out of it. Like if she uploads three or four, I'm going to watch at least one or two of them. He was like, child, I try. I just can't because it's just too boring. I say all this and the reason I'm saying this is because it has sickened me for months on end to see him have somebody that loyal somebody that sweet support him when he don't he don't show the same love and support he would brag about how he don't have to support people back and he had all of those people supporting him and he was only supporting at that time like 63 people or 64 people something like that and he had hundreds of subscribers now a lot of them was creators and he don't even have to watch their content back he only watched a few people the few people that he watched was the people that he was he was searching for and shaping up to be his legion members aka his minions so he could have his own clique to try to control and do his dirty work and basically cater to him It just, it's just disgusting to me. He had all these people following him and he would brag about how he was only following at that time, like 60 some people, but he had, he had hundreds already following him a lot, a majority that already had their own channel. And he took pride in how he didn't even have to watch other people content because everybody watched him. He didn't have to support hardly anybody because Everybody watched him and they just loved him. And I tell him yeah. about you, you're going to grow fast because, you know, everybody like your energy. The whole time he still, I, it, I wasn't knowing the whole time I had talked to him about how he emailed people, how, the comment people, all this other stuff, you know, he was still sending the aggressive emails. I had no idea till literally yesterday today is i don't even know what the date is i'm so distraught right now but today is no it's january the 4th so i didn't find out to january the 3rd literally that he was still emailing people like this all he cared about is people's numbers his goals were to grow off of people numbers he would say stuff like i just need to get me love's life to notice me um, he would go after um, Simply Food by T.Y., Steph and Tosh. He asked him, did I watch Eats with Q? I told, I told him, no, I don't watch Eats with Q. I said, I already support a, a lot of people. And I, she was just never a person that I crossed her channel enough to really get into. But I do watch Me Loves Life. Okay, so he didn't like Me Loves Life. He likes Eat, Eat with Q. But... Everybody else likes be loves be loves life, and he would be like, "Well, if I could just get her attention and just get her to do my tuna tuna um, challenge, I know I'll be at that end." Because see, be loves life was growing fast, rapidly. Eat with Q wasn't. She wasn't growing at all. She was stagnant. So he was looking after the numbers. He really wasn't big on her. Be loves life was his goal and his focus. And I was like, oh, you know, because he asked me how well did I know her. So we get back around her and he, you know, and I was like, yeah, I watch her. I don't watch every video because I try to support smaller people. But yeah, I still watch her. 
And he would go on about, if I could just get her attention, his focus in life was to get the attention of everybody. He only cared about numbers. And he would make comments like, well, I don't, it, it, how did he say it? I don't care about her that much. Like, how he said it, I can't remember it word for word, so I don't want to say it wrong. But the point of what he was saying was, he just, she just, he just need her to shout him out so he can grow. He was going after Casey Connections. The people he was going after, Hood Lion and Sinker, to get to be Love's Life was Casey Connections, Simply Food by T.Y., MK Bites. It was somebody else. I know those three, he was going after Hook, Line, and Sinker to, to get like their attention and their shadows, but it was somebody else. It was somebody else in the, uh, it wasn't Cuzzo AB. He wanted a shout out from, from Casey Connection because he said if you can get a, a shout out from Casey Connection, you will literally go overnight because all her subscribers really listen to her. That's how Cuzzo AB, she shouted Cuzzo AB out. Look how they done made it. Look at MK Bites. Look at all these people. So if I could just get my shout out. And she eventually did acknowledge him, but he got mad because she did it in her after her after party show and he wasn't happy with that. He wanted her to do it in the front center. And so he just kept going on and on and about how he was going to email her and correct her own, uh, own, um, it was something that happened and how he was going to correct her own. I'm like, why? No, don't just say thank you. At least she acknowledged you. Be thankful. No, nothing was ever good enough. Time keeps going on. Things get worse. He is relentless about people in these numbers. He started befriending people for numbers. Um, he asked me, had I heard of Sam's World? I said, I know Sam's World through um, You Love Shining. So let's talk about Houston. There was going to be a meet and greet with Tasty Mudbank Eats, I Love Lisa Michelle Show, and Miss C's Mudbank. The meet and greet was going to be May 24th. I meant May 25th. My birthday is May 24th. So for my birthday, my husband was carrying me to a meet and greet because I never got to go to one and I really wanted to go go to one. And the one I wanted to go to in Houston, I couldn't, uh, that everybody went to, I couldn't go to that one because my dad wasn't doing well and I had to stay with him. So, and, and not on, only that, my funds was a little depressed because I hadn't worked now in close to a year. So I couldn't go to that one and, and I really wanted to go to that one. So he wanted to make sure that I at least got to go to one. So I made the mistake at the time I said it, I didn't know it was a mistake by saying, I want to go to the meet and greet. I had already met You Love Shiny um, through just mutual friends. Like I think, she, how I met her is I followed Tasty Mukbang East and I met, that's how I started following You Love Shutting because they had done a collab together. And then when I started following her, she was promoting the meet and greet saying, you know, how sweet Tasty Mukbang East was and how I, I love Lisa Michelle show was so sweet and um, how Missy Mukbangs was so sweet. And, you know, they was having a meet and greet to hit up Tasty and, um, get the information for the meet and greet or whatnot. So when I mentioned to Lips that I think I'm going to go to the meet and greet, he's like, okay, well, we can go. My friend got to hook up with the, with the hotels. We can get the hotels, blah, 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 blue, the blue. Okay, first of all, he likes to control every situation. 
so the first thing out of the gate, how this started going south was we, it, it started out saying, okay, so I'm going to the uh, meet and greet. It's my best friend birthday. So let's do this. The first thing he does that day is get on his channel and tell the Legion that he going to the meet and greet for them. And to collab and grow and get to know people. But he told me we was going to celebrate my birthday and have some fun. Because we had got with Shani at this point. I'm finding out where can we go out and have dinner. Because I'm going up a day or two before the actual meet and greet. Like, I'm going like a Wednesday or Thursday so I can celebrate my birthday. So I'm finding out places, things to do. Um, she's telling me a peers to go to, places I could go eat, stuff to do. The whole hookup... Um, nice stuff just nice stuff to do it so i'm i'm writing out an itinerary at this point i have made an itinerary and plus i got the dates that we will be doing the collabs for the meet and greet so as time goes on and we we're gearing up toward may things start getting a little weird Basically, what he does is everybody that Shani had invited that was close to Shani. We talking about people from New York, Florida, whoever is supposed to be coming. He has got with all these people and and got with Shani. Shani is a sweetheart. Now, keep in mind, Shani is a sweetheart. To me, the whole situation was she was just manipulated like the rest of us. But he had basically manipulated her into um having the event at her house and i said well i don't think nothing wrong with you love shiny but i don't feel comfortable staying at her house i'm personally not just gonna go to houston texas and impose on her like that and and everything and me and shiny shiny been talking on the phone by this point and i love a sweetheart but I don't want to impose on her and her kids like that. So I'm like, so I'm probably just going to stay at the hotel because even though she opened up her home to us and that's sweet and all, that's a lot of us there. And that's just, I don't want to do that to anybody. So he's steady making plans. So at this point, he done set up for us, the, the whole meet and greet thing. When we go to Houston for everybody that he done tried to, form in a little group it was like willie uh willie will eats and and um the hurry clan me and i don't know who else we all stay with uh shine uh they all was gonna stay with shiny and basically what he was gonna do is he had to set up to do all these collabs that basically didn't include the people that was hosting it so what he did was tell them, oh, that I wouldn't be interested in this, that, and the other, and it excluded me out of the collabs, right, that they were going to be doing. And he had it set where he was just going to be doing it, right? Like anything from breakfast collabs to whatever. He had it fi He was setting it up where it was talking to me, seeing what I was going to do then going back to them. It was like, well, me knowing how Nell is, she not really going to be into that. So we'll do this, this, and this, and let her do this and this. That's what he was doing. To this day, until they see this video, they probably not even aware of that. They'll have no idea that that entire situation was going on. Moving on. So I tell him, look. The whole purpose of going to a meet and greet is to meet and greet with the people that's hosting it mainly and then other people that's there at the meet and greet. Like, it's no purpose in going if I'm not going to collab and be with the people that's there. So what is your purpose of going if you sit up here telling me you don't even like the I Love Lisa Michelle show? Then when she found out he was coming, she reached out to him and said, well, I want to collab when you hear. Then he tells me, child i don't even like her but now she want to a collab what should i do i'm committed i said i think you should do it if you like her i don't really know her but i ain't never cared for her, but you the only one out of everybody with the highest numbers i used to have the highest numbers till i got hit by the purge and at this point 
I don't know nobody numbers. I don't know Miss C's Mubay numbers. I don't know Tasty Mubay Eats numbers. I don't love, I don't know, I love Lisa Michelle numbers because I like people not because of their numbers, it's because I generally like people. I didn't know I love Lisa Michelle. I only knew, knew uh, Miss C's Miss C's Mukbangs and uh, Tasty Mukbang Eats, and I really wanted to meet them. So I'm like, look, it, it, so the situation just kept snowballing to the point. I said, you know what? I'm not going to the to the meet and greet. I'll just go sit on the beach somewhere or go to the mountains. Just forget it. So then he was like, well, if you're not going to the meet and greet, I'm not going. I'm like, but you done set up all this stuff. You might as well be going because at this point, it's you. It's about. It's all about you. What is the purpose of me going? What is the purpose of anybody going? It's about you. So he's like, well, if you ain't going, there ain't no reason we're going. we're going to celebrate your birthday. No, we're going to celebrate you. We ain't playing nothing to do with my birthday. All this is about you. So then he was also making this comment about, okay, I'm going to get to the rooms. My friend got she to connect or whatever. And he was like, your husband might as well get over because at least one night I'm, I'm going to be able to come in there and lay up in the bed with you or whatever. I'm like, no. So I'm do done. I reach out to taste until I'm uh, uh, due to unknown circumstances or for whatever reason, I'm no longer coming. But that's the truth about why I didn't come. So he said, but well, now I got to tell my legion something. So he reached out to tell the legions that something wrong with his back as an excuse of why he wasn't going to the meet and greet. But he claimed he wasn't going because I wasn't going. But you, you done made it about you. You might as well go now. <laughs> So then I said, plus, I said, I tell you, I I'll just go to the beach somewhere. I said, plus, I'm supposed to be going to Jacksonville to see my, my best friend, Phone Jones. He said, well, let me know when we go to Jacksonville. When did you invite yourself? And I told him we was going on a couple's trip with my best friend and my husband for her birthday. He invited himself, talking about, I'll get the hotel rooms. I can get the discount. My friend got a hookup when it... And, and I realized when it comes to the whole hotel thing, control. Where you stay at, when people come and go, and what you do. It's what the whole hotel room thing situation basically is about. If he can set it up, then he can control it and do whatever the coming and going or and, and whatever. So... I'm like, no, that's okay. And he telling me, yeah, if, when you go to Jacksonville, because I I got to have this collab with Casey Connection. And when you go to, uh, and that's just, that's just, it'll be everything for my channel. Do you know how fast I can grow if I can just collab with Casey Connection? So I'm like, well, what you going to do? You just, so at this point, you just pulling up on her. So I'm feeling some kind of way. So now I got to figure out, how I'm going to plan to go and not mention it to him that I'm going because don't embarrass me like that. So I get in her inbox and let her know I got a trip planned to come out there. If he pulls up on you, it has nothing to do with me and I do apologize because, and I, and I did that after the friendship ended. But I'm telling y'all all this to know how we started going down here with the friendship. So by this time, let's put, let me put the, put a timeline, y'all. How far we are, we in now? So we started our reconnected friendship in March. Now we are down to mid May, literally a couple of days before my birthday. So he is already earlier in the month of May sent me a text message saying, "Okay, so I see how this how, see how you gonna be or." I need to find the text. Uh, I wish I had the text message. I'm not one of those people that just keep a bunch of text messages because for what I don't really normally have a situation where I need them. But but he, he sent me something along the lines of, I see how you're going to be. You're going to have time for everybody but me. At the point in time when he sent me this text message, I'm standing at a stove with my dad sitting in a chair because my dad insists on wanting to cook something, whatever it was, something that he really, really wanted and he wanted it how he cook it. I'm standing at the stove trying to help my dad when I get this message. So before I can respond to the message, I got to help my dad finish cooking whatever it was, make sure he get up from the table, get for out of the chair, back to the table, eat, and then back in the bed. So we looking at all pretty much well almost an hour here, right? Well, pretty much well an hour. The whole time I'm waiting, like I'm just boiling, like 
mad, like on 1,000 trying to hold it in and play it off. And as soon as I can, I go outside and I text him back. By this time, I'm crying because I'm so mad because you have to understand before now, it's been that pressure of trying to call me at midnight telling me that you jealous of my husband because he takes all my time. You telling me that I, I put my, my kids before you. You telling me that, like, um, he feel like, you know, our friendship is fra kind of like a fragile. You damn right it is because if you gonna keep on with this kind of behavior, I can't, I can't be the kind of friend you need me to be. It's not gonna happen. So, at this point, like I said, this is around May 18th, May 20th, or somewhere down here. So, every day after that, it just keeps declining. The behavior just keeps declining. So, I said I'm going to make, I've made a banner for his channel, working on an intro for his channel, but I'm also trying to work on my channel again. I'm already was kind of wasn't on my channel because after the purge, I lost interest in my channel. Like, I was grinding over there. I was putting out everything from show reviews three, four, five times a day. I was grinding. And then for all of that to be snatched out from under me, like I was doing sub for sub and I wasn't, that literally just made me almost not even want my channel. So I'm trying to get back into my, with my channel too, making his stuff, helping him pick out his thumbnails, trying to get into doing my own stuff. And then I'm dealing with all this attitude and you gonna text me something like that talking about I see uh like I'm not a good friend to you and you see how this friendship gonna be. I got uh everybody else's is time is more important, but his what are you man? Needless to say I went off. I can't remember all I said, but I can tell you now it it probably include more cuss words than you probably hear. In, your, in, in a year's time because I got bad potty mouth. I do good on here, but I cuss like a sailor. So needless to say, so then he gonna reply back that he didn't he that he didn't deserve for me to cuss him out and talk to him and be disrespectful. This thing sucks so much life out of me at this point that I'm damn near well over it. So, no, let me backtrack because that incident happened in April. The incident that happened in May, it was two or three that happened in May that that ended, that resulted in the end of the friendship. So, then May, now keep in mind, we still having disagreements about his being in people comments. The way he come in and the way he going after people because of their numbers. I still don't condone this. Okay. I still don't condone that. And I still don't condone some of the things that he has said about people. He was careful about saying stuff about people to me because he know how I am. He know I'm not really... I'm just going to correct you on it, period, point blank. I'm going to call you on it, correct you on it. That's it. We're going to keep it moving. So he don't, he didn't get, he don't, he don't talk about people a lot to me like bad, like he do some people because he know I'm not, I'm not here for it and I'm going to get you together about it. But he just went on about how he needed beloved's life attention and everything so then he comes up so i i'm telling him stuff how to grow his challenge i said a channel i said you want to grow your channel a good thing to do is challenges so do a challenge so he did the popsicle challenge so when he did the popsicle challenge he was just just dead set on forcing mk bites to do that channel challenge she's like if i can get him he said i finally got mk bites in my comments now if i can just get him to do that challenge and he was just dead set on focusing on him to, to get him to do that challenge and then after that he came up with the tuna challenge and he was doing everything he could possible 
to get B Love's life to do this choosing challenge. Like he was obsessed with it to the point losing sleep about it that he needed her to do that challenge because if she did his challenge, then everybody was gonna do it. And if M MK Bites did his popsicle challenge, everybody would be on board with it. He would just become obsessive with stuff, with numbers. You had to have high numbers. He was disrespectful to people that that had low numbers. And then at the same time, he would pick people strategically to try to build his own little club, his own little clique, where basically he can sit around and talk about people and dog people out and be manipulative. And he was trying to build, I call it his a community for that. So then he um, called me one day and we was talking. He told me to tell my husband, hello. My husband didn't speak back. He said, you tell your husband? I said, hello. I said, yeah, you heard me telling that. He said, oh, well, he didn't say that back. I said, he don't like you. I just, I, I don't have time to tiptoe around it. I said, you know, he don't, he don't, he don't like you. I said, he just, he don't care for you. And then uh, he said, but most husbands feel that way about me. I said, well, why? So lips believes every straight man wants to have sex with a gay man and in his mind he is that man he thinks everybody husband wants him he thinks every husband is jealous and envious of him if you spend any time with him he'll tell you how well them lips can suck a mean dick he strongly believes that he can turn any straight so basically man. Basically, he going to tell me because basically it's like the power because they all they feel him cause intimidated he by him yeah, and all this kind of stuff. I'm like, <laughs> my husband though. So anyway, the 21st yep. that just sparked a fire in him to get at my husband. Like that pissed him off. That made him, his his sole motivation was because my husband didn't care for him, was to do something to hurt my husband or to hurt us. So what he set out to do, what resulted in the end of our fr friendship was try to come after my marriage. I don't play about my marriage. My husband and I have been together since we was 18. And for you to come after my marriage... So what he started doing was trying to manipulate me into thinking that before my I met my husband, that he may or may not have been gay. He tried to say that my husband ran with a group of people and they did all kind of things. And he never knew exactly. He knew my husband was from close to where we lived. And he grew up in a certain area. But, and he kept trying to tell me my husband went to a particular church. But the church he was saying my husband went to, he never went to. My husband didn't go to that church. He didn't belong to that church. And I had already told him that. But he was dead set on saying that was my husband and he went to that church. But he didn't. But at this point, I'm like, okay, get on with the point. I said, okay, he don't go to that church. I said, but anyway, what 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 is it? What did you guys say? Well, I'm not going to say, but maybe you need to talk to your husband. My mama raised me, my, my dad parents, my dad parents raised me that you don't get in people marriages. So I'm just not going to say, it, but maybe you need to talk to your husband. So he kept on. Uh, I'm like, what are you trying to imply? I, he's like, you just need to talk to him because when we he used to run with a particular group, and let's just say, it, I can't remember all the words, but he was trying to phrase it like, my husband ran with this two group, and the only people that he knew and he could remember from that time frame, he asked me, did my husband run with? So I wanted to know what he was getting at. So me being me, <laughs> he didn't know this side of me. I want to see you really my friend. I'm going to see what kind of friends you are. Because what you trying to say about my husband? 
So he continues to tell me my husband used to run with these people. So I, at this point, I, okay, so at this point, I'm like, okay, let me call you back. I got something to do. So I get on the phone and I call Phone Joe's. I'm like, girl, I need to talk to you about something. I said, Lips is trying to, uh, I said, Lips is mad because I told him my husband don't care for him. I said, so ever since I told him the other day, he been saying a little roundabout way stuff. I said, so now he just basically up here trying to say um, that my husband is gay. I said, you know what? I said, I'm finna go along with it. I said, I'm just gonna play along with it. Cause I'm, at this point, we really want to know what he gonna say. So, <laughs> and she done talked to him on the phone before. We done talked to him before on the phone. And on the phone, he gonna tell us we was on the phone on three-way. And him, him he and, and I Love Shiny was like competing who get to a thousand first. And he gonna make the comment. He, and he gonna like, make the comment. He was like, well, I don't care. He said, uh, but the stuff that he was saying was mean. So I was like, but but y'all friends, why would y'all be complete competing? Why don't y'all just help each other? He said, well, um, he said, well, she, she, uh, you, she is my friend. Anybody can be my friend as long as they, uh, long as they, they my friend behind me. Me and Phil Jones get quiet. Like, literally, you can hear the crickets. Say, who? Gonna do what? Say, huh? Gonna do who? Baby. That mean me and Plot. That's why you keep asking about my, my numbers. Because you're trying to make sure that you get be that I, I'm behind you. <laughs> no, get thee behind me, Satan, okay? Get thee behind me. So, that happened early May. So, let me go on and continue this story. Because this story all over the place. I knew it was going to be long. I'm sorry. You just have to listen and have a plate of food. I don't know what to tell you. So at this point, he we back on the situation. We on like the twenty second of May at this point, and he, I'm like, yeah, he ran around with these people. I'm like, lives for real. I was like, are you kidding me? I'm like. <laughs> If he gay, you need to go and tell me now because you supposed to be my best friend. I've known you since high school. And if, if you got something to tell me and you my friend, why would you tell me? If you're not going to tell me, I'm hanging up. So I hung you, up. You say, then he's like, you hung up on me. You really hung up on me. Don't nobody. Basically, he's like, don't nobody hang up on me. And so I'm like, if you if you my friend, you really going to tell Because I want him to say it at this point. I want him to say it. So after about 30, 45 more minutes of this, I finally say, Liz, look. Because he's still going about, my dad parents told me don't. They raised me with the morals. Don't, you don't break up a happy home. You don't get in people. I mean, he going, he really laying it on. He really trying to manipulate me. I mean, he doing everything in his mind to sound like it's that bad and I need to uh, to mess up my relationship with my husband to the point that we where we gonna get into it and be mad at each other we not talking the goal here is for me not to be talking to my husband that way I can spend all my time talking to him so 30 45 minutes in more of it I said look lips I'm sorry I gotta be honest my husband never hung out with them people. My husband never went to that church. My husband never ran with these people. I'm sorry I lied to you. I said, I just really wanted to know what you was going to say. I really wanted to know just how, as a friend, this was going to go. Like, really. I'm like, LOL at this time. I'm like sending him a message like, LOL, really? I can't believe it. I said, I just really wanted to see how far you was going to go with this. I was like, you know what? We can't be friends no more. Like, this is it. This is done. Like, we we can't. We cannot. We can't be friends no more. So, that whole, this whole, that conversation turns into, you know, why we can't be friends no more. I'm done with the conversation and or whatever. And he, he like, basically trying to figure out how to fix it 
because he didn't realize at this point with me he done messed up. So then he 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 telling me the same day later on that day you know he trying to form this group and it's really important to him that I be a big part of that group because I'm I know a a bunch of stuff about YouTube and the algorithm and and get out there and the people trust me and I've been on, been been there a bit on YouTube three years and people really respect me and I said yeah I earn that respect by being truthful and being honest I don't use people I do me on my channel I don't bother people I said but I don't want that I don't want that image tarnished and whatever it is that you got going on and that you trying to do I don't want to be a part of it so he was like well just think about it blase blase whoop de woo so the next day um of course my husband is past lived at this at this point my husband like the 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 motherfucker can call here he don't don't be on the phone with him or nothing because i told him my, my husband's my best friend so me being me of course i don't told him what what happened i told him what went down so we just have a whole falling out about everything so i'm making him an intro so this was the end after this happened that's on like the 22nd, the 23rd. We coming up to the day before my birthday, literally. The day I'm finna leave to go out of town. So maybe I'm I'm a, ahead of day. So maybe that happened on the 21st. On the 22nd, the real falling out happens. Cause I leave to go out of town the 23rd for my birthday. We go, I go spend my birthday on the beach. I didn't tell nobody. If you follow me, you know, I just showed up on the beach live and in color. And then I showed up the beach the second time in Jacksonville three weeks three or four weeks later with uh phone jones and sg so anyway i'm making him an intro for his video y'all want to see the intro i can drop the intro and let y'all see it child i don't got no problem letting nobody see it so i made an intro for his channel right and because i wouldn't edit his video and put the intro in there he threw a tizzy fit sent me some messages he was mean in the messages so i decided that that's enough i don't let nobody disrespect me my husband don't talk to me like that my kids don't talk to me like that you think i'm gonna let you talk to me like that so at this point i said you know what yesterday was too much but this right here is the icing on the cake we done i said i'm gonna finish this intro i'm gonna send it to you i have already sent you how to use the the info information on how to use power direct how to drop that intro into power direct and then your video follows that i told you that four weeks it took me to make the intro because i was doing my own thing from starting back school, working on my own channel in my own house, and seeing about my dad to go and to play with two. I gave you two clips to put together to play with and power direct out of your phone that you made. At this point, you're supposed to know how to do it. I told you to learn how to do it. I gave you the instructions on how to do it. Now you telling me you you sending me crazy subliminal messages, that, and then in the end of the message, you gonna tell me. Why am I being difficult? Why can't I just edit the videos for him? Why? I'm not going to sit around and edit no videos for you. That's your channel. You already over there mistreating your husband, forcing him on the channel. I, like I told you, YouTube was your thing. Gaming was your husband's thing. You're mad because he was coming in gaming. Let the man game. That's what he do. YouTube was you. Let him be. Let him, you do you. Don't make what you want to do have to be what he doing you making the man miserable the man got a sweet husband the, the, his husband too good for him i ain't even gonna lie his husband des deserves somebody better he deserves somebody that's gonna love and respect him and appreciate him and that ain't lips and i'm i said it and i said what i said that's his husband is a sweetheart so anyway so i'm done so over the next two to three days between the, the 23rd and the 27th, something like that, he gets somebody to take the intro that I made. I figured it was his husband. I don't know who did it. Now he gonna get petty and take the border that I put around all my banners, 
put it around his intro. It's the same border that y'all see sometimes in some of my videos. If you watch me, you know what I'm talking about. Those who watch me faithfully know who I'm talking about. I put a border, a rainbow. It's um, the Chirac, your inner peace. It's that border, your inner peace. Around my thumbnails is also around, because I meditate now. That's where this come from, because I meditate. I don't take these off. It's the border on my channel. It's the border around some of my videos. He gonna take the border and put it around his video to be picked. Taking a jab at me because I ended the friendship. Not only that, he has Sam Swirl, his new buddy, to make a video where I used I wear a, a black scarf with a net, uh, knot tied in it, where she wearing one of those, and she has her food set up like I said to try to take take a jab at me. But see, I'm in jab back because at this point. I, I'm not. I, I don't have time. My husband said, let it go. Turn over to God. That's what I tried to do. So as time goes on, the only person I tell that knows about the in-depth of what happened is two people. Phone Jones and another YouTuber. I'm not going to say her name, but she has a channel. And the third person, she knows which is Face Squad. Because she's how we got reunited and anybody can ask her. I cried. I was so happy and so tickled and so it's so thankful to her for sharing that video because it reunited us. I remember I don't fault her. None of this is her fault. She didn't have nothing to do with him being evil. That has nothing to do with her. But I was just so thankful to her because if she didn't ever share it, it I don't know when I'd have ever saw it. Because at you know at the beginning I was no who knew he was Lucifer nobody knew, so anyway, I told one other YouTuber, uh, Phone Jones and Face Squad, and and this is what I said to him, and I didn't tell Face Squad in depth everything. I just told her, you know, he did you know something mean to me. We not friends no more. I can't. I won't. I can't move with him like that no more. I can't fool him like that no more. He really not a friend. Toward the end of the friendship, he had convinced me that the Fritz family had copied him by eating with their hands. Like he woke me up out of my sleep with it like early one morning. So, and I know I had spent a lot of time trying to help him build his channel. So I'm mad. I'm upset because I'm thinking they really done done this to him. Because how he, he messaged me and put it to me was like they had, it was horrible. He was so distraught and upset. So I, that's my friend. I'm mad. I'm distraught and upset because he know I'm that kind of friend that if I ride for you, I ride for you. I fight for you. I'm there. So I'm thinking they really done done something wrong. So I make a horrible video, a horrible video that said exposing the Fritz fam. Y'all, when I tell you, I felt so bad when I found out that he was lying on them. I had to immediately apologize to them because that's something I don't do. And it's so funny to me because he had manipulated me that much. And I'm not a person that's easily manipulated. But he's that manipulative. I'm trying not to cry. I, I said I wanted to get through this without crying. I 
I want to say thank you to the Fritz family for one, accepting my apology and forgiving me because even though I know they have, it hurts me to know that I hurt somebody because I thought that I was helping somebody that lied to me. That has bothered me to my core. I would never hurt anybody. Like, never hurt anyone. And the fact that I hurt them, I mean, I'm so sorry. Like, And the fact that I allowed somebody to manipulate me. I just can't. I mean, it just hurts me so bad. Like, Thank you again to Faith Squad because we was in her life. And we was in her life. The friendship had ended. And I, they happened to pop up in her life. And I said, Fritz fam, I owe y'all an apology. Something happened that didn't sit right with me. And I, I owe y'all an apology for it. And they reached out to me on IG. And that's how I discovered that he had lied. Because I would never say anything. Y'all, I, I was so ugly in that video because I was so mad because I thought that, that they had done something so wrong to him. Y'all, I gotta stop crying because my husband is, is does not do well if I cry. And, and, sigh, and then I had to sit here for all this time, from May till now, holding all of that in, because it, I just felt like if I tried to tell anybody how he was, they wasn't going to believe me. Because by this point, he had everybody so fooled that he was such a good person that believed in God and all of this kind of stuff, and that he was so righteous and Everybody was so enthralled in him. And then the third person that I told, told me, well, you understand he's never done anything to me. And I don't do friend. I don't do friendships like where if one person is mad at somebody, I stop being friends with them. I was like, oh yeah, no, no problem. Cause that's what I'm not saying. I'm, I, I would never ask anybody not to be friends with anybody. All I'm is like, you know, to be aware and I was trying to make a couple of people that was getting close to him aware. So, because I didn't want him. And the reason I was making, I told her is because I knew she had connections to me, Love's Life. I knew she had connections to Prissy P. I knew she had connections to people with numbers. And I needed, I just felt like if I told her what he was doing, that she would let them know to be aware because she was she's a close what I consider a close friend of mine and she know I would never lie to her she know I would never lie about anything but she did the opposite she started befriending him she started making every live every video about him engulfing herself in him like hung up on his growth and popularity like she was into his growth 
and being a part of it like he was into Beloved's life growth. When I found out that he had finally made the connection with Beloved's life, when he was starting to make connections with Steph and Tosh, people that I knew he was just after because of their numbers, I had to question if God was real. Like I had, if you go back and look at my community post, you'll see times when I said, I need to fall back from YouTube for a minute. I can't be here for a minute. I can't, you know, I wanted to close my channel. If it weren't for Faith Squad and Phone Jones, I would have shut my channel down because I didn't, I couldn't anymore because at this point I was like, why would God let somebody so mean, so evil and so manipulative grow like that? Why would he allow that? And phone Jones and face go out and tell me to just pray over it. It's going to be okay. And phone Jones just kept telling me, just, just let God, he is going to be okay. All of it's going to come out. God will handle it. You, it can't keep going. I had to pray so hard. I knew that he would start saying bad stuff about me. I didn't know what or how he was going to go about doing it. But I knew he was going to do his best to try to stop anybody from liking me, following me, watching me, trusting me, because he'd already told, told me how he had watched how people listen to me, how they, when, when I say people, we talking about new YouTubers when I'm in a room telling them how to grow their channel and stuff. I spend more time telling people how to grow their channel then I grow, then I do on my, then I spend time growing my own channel because I just want to help people because it's so hard to get help. And there's so many lies and misconceptions in the YouTube world that I wanted people to know the truth and how to grow and what to do. And it's, so he wanted to tarnish all of that. He wanted to tell people that I was a bad person and make up lies about me. Roughly four weeks ago, I prayed because I knew he was doing it. I didn't know what he was saying. I didn't know how he was going about it, but I prayed. And I asked. January the 3rd, I received an inbox message and it said, Neil, WTF, I can't call me. <laughs> I had said I was, wasn't going into the new year. And I had prayed, Lord, I don't want to go into the new year with this on my heart. I need to be able to close it so I can move on. Lord, I trust you. Let no weapons against me prosper. Let anything anybody said about me bad and that's not true. Let it give me strength. Let it make me stronger. When I asked, when I talked to Prissy yesterday on the phone, I couldn't do anything but cry because since May, I've had this weight on me. I felt so bad that I didn't tell anybody what he was doing because I didn't think they was going to believe me. 
I didn't think they was gonna trust me because I'm gonna tell you how it works in the YouTube world. Everybody would have just thought that I was jealous of his success. And I I have never been jealous of him. I've never told anybody not to watch him. I've never told anybody to not be friends with him. I've never told anybody really anything bad about him, period. Not until now. I've never said nothing bad to another YouTuber about him. I would never, I have never told my, I'm not to be his friend or nothing. And for him, but God answered my prayers. God put people in people's life for a reason. They make them connect for a reason. And when he answered my prayers through Chrissy yesterday, now I can say this and get it off my heart and off my chest. I can let it go and have closure to the situation. It killed me to watch him use people to manipulate people. He don't care about y'all. He never cared about none of y'all. All he cared about was the numbers and the growth. It was all fake. I'm not happy anybody had a bad experience with him. But I'm happy that now I can speak up. Well, just happy that I can release this. I'm happy that everybody knows the truth now. Because I don't want to see people keep getting hurt. It's so hard to sit back and get, keep getting hurt. It was hard to watch somebody that's supposed to be one of them, uh, that I consider a close friend know what happened and keep glorifying it and glorifying it and going on and on about it and promoting it. And you know what he's and knew what he was doing. I told you what he was doing. I told you that he was using people for their numbers and what he was trying to do. And you kept glorifying it and you kept helping him. It, it's so hard. I need some tissue to sit back and watch. But now y'all know. The sad thing about all of this, you really want to know the sad thing about all of this? He sees no role in what he done. He will tell you he did nothing wrong. His exact words to me was, I did nothing wrong. So I'm going to tell you in this entire situation, he's going to say, I did nothing wrong. He going to see this as a victory. Me releasing this video, anybody releasing a video, he going to see it as a, a victory. Because all he going to say is... It's growth for me because they going to be still clicking me. They going to be still watching me and I'm going to be still growing. My, I'm going to still be getting the clicks and views, honey. Yes, honey. Yes, honey. Yes, honey. He going to see it as complete growth and opportunity. He will not acknowledge anything that he's done or see anything that he's done wrong. He has never gave me money for anything. I've never charged him for anything why on God's green earth would he need to give me money for anything? I got a man. My husband work. My kids work. I work. My mama work. My aunts work. If I needed anything, I'll get it from them before him. Honey, I would start a GoFundMe and I would act right, ask you to cash at me if I needed anything. So this here childhood friend, all I did was try to do the best and what was right by you. And that was the thanks that I got. I want to thank the Fritz family and Prissy P and Faith Squad and Fo Jones for rocking with me through this whole entire journey. Even though y'all didn't know the brunt of what's going on. I hope the Fritz family tell that story of what happened To you all today the signature lip assassin sauce baby this is the signature lip assassin sauce signature assassin sauce 
So, I was new to, uh, I had never did a crab boil, boil before, had crab or anything. So, I wanted to make the love sauce. So, I'm digging in the cabinet, trying to see if we, I have everything to make her sauce. I have went to, you know, her YouTube page, got everything she said she used in the sauce, and I'm trying to make it, and I'm on the phone with Lips and Listens, what you doing? I was like, oh, I just left uh, Memphis from, uh, Joe's Crab Shack. I went and got some crabs. I don't know what kind of crabs. He's like, what crabs did you get? I was like, I don't know what kind of crabs I got because I don't know nothing about crabs. I just ordered like one of the cheapest things that I could get because I don't, you know, know where to get crabs from. I said, so I'm going to make some beloved sauce. I said, Chad, she got everything in this sauce. I'm out here trying to pull out the kitchen sink, pull out the tub, trying to get the carburetor out the car to make this sauce because I have no idea what I'm doing. I need literally a whole chemistry set. I was like, Chad, she hooked this sauce up. You, I don't even know what I'm doing. I said, I hope it turned out right and it tastes like she made it because I have not a clue. Because I'm going to tell y'all about your girl. I can cook, but... When we get to making all these sauces and all these seasons, child, I don't know what it's going to turn out and taste like. So, he tells me, her sauce ain't that good. My sauce is way better. I don't care if her sauce is that much anyway. I was like, well, I don't know I, I, how I'm going to get your sauce. I said, but anyway, I said, but I'm trying to make this beloved sauce. He said, well, what you got? I said, I just got almost all the seasons she got, but some of them. He said, okay, I'll tell you how to make it. He said, just follow my instructions. So he started telling me what to put in the pot, what to do, and all of this kind of stuff. So when it gets done, he says, oh my God, you just made my sauce. I said, what sauce? He said, my assassin sauce. I'm like, what? This your sauce? He said, yes, I've never gave anybody the recipe to, to my sauce and told them how to make it before. He said, you just made my sauce. Oh my God. So that's how I came out with the video, um, Lips Assassin Sauce, because I was trying to make me love sauce. I didn't have everything that I needed. I didn't know what I was doing. So he was coaching me along telling me how to make the sauce but he was telling me how to make his sauce that's what i ended up making so i had stored his sauce in a in a freezer container in the refrigerator because i had plenty because it's just me and my husband eating and when i eat i eat you know in a little serving bowl i don't have the big bowl like everybody else because i'm new to crabs i've only in life eaten crabs three times two of them two two let's let's redo that i forgot when i went to florida i ate crabs so four times so, and i'm new to crabs and i've been studying casey connection relentlessly i love how casey connection and nk bites um eat their crabs and before i even went on my trip like i was watching um casey because honey your girl was gonna be you know i we already knew i was gonna be staying at the condo and this and then when i went to jacksonville i was gonna be in the suite and honey your girl was going to be like a real housewife. I was going to be sitting up there like I was bougie breaking them crabs. And because I was trying to figure out how to get that whole big piece of meat out. Because I, and I, and what kind of crabs. And when Casey's talking, she always be talking about what crab sweeter or something like that. And I, and I watched me love life, eat them too. But I, I just like how the technique, Casey connections and, um, mk bites be doing it i mean that big old piece of me coming chat i was gonna be down to the beach boozy real bougie just breaking them oatmeal eating them and everything and honey i made sure that when we stayed in the condo i was gonna be able to make my beloved sauce and everything the whole situation had happened with lips i didn't even feel like making my beloved sauce. i ended up with some plain supposed to have been garlic butter but it was mostly yeah butter. that's how i ended up with the assassin's sauce. so people was in my comments asking me you know how what's the recipe what's the recipe and people was asking me where do you put it all i can tell you is i had all the stuff to make beloved sauce so basically whatever it is got to be a version of her sauce because all the spices i had out to use was hers for her sauce and i used some of the spices not all the spices but i don't can't tell you what i was using because it was one tablespoon of this one teaspoon of this two tablespoons of this and i was just dumping in the pot and he was talking and um 
at the same time, he was asking me stuff about thumbnails and whatnot. And I was sitting the stuff back over there where it come from. So I had all the spices out. So I don't know which all the ones that I did use and all the ones I didn't use. I just know it's a version of her sauce that he trying to package and sell the same way she trying to package and sell hers. It's, t it's basically her sauce. That's all I can tell you. It's her sauce, but not as much as one thing as it is another and so forth and so what. Yeah. So that's the secret behind the assassin sauce that he trying to produce and sell like hers. It's just going to be a version of her sauce, basically, that's been altered. There you have it. So I'm still minding my business, trying to not to go there, but he wanted to start posting messages. So I said, okay, fine. So let's post the rest of the message. And this message right here is about him basically trying to ruin my marriage. Like, who would do that to somebody trying to insinuate that their husband is gay just because they mad because somebody's husband said they don't like him? So, I kept it up for a little bit, 30, 45 minutes, because he was in the live trying to get me love's life attention. So, then I finally had to come out and say, look, I'm lying. You know, I can't go on with this no longer. I can't let you keep going on with this. I just really wanted to see how far you was going to take this. So now I know where our friendship stands. I'm going to finish your intro and then we done. So that's what I did. I finished our, his intro and I ended the relationship. I'm going to show y'all the intro too. This is the intro I made for Lips. He told the Legion the devil was trying to ruin his upload that day, referring to me. He didn't use it because he was mad at me for letting him go on about the lies he was trying to tell about my husband. And then the fact that I also ended the whole friendship. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, y'all. Con it like it's Sherry. Con it like it's Sherry. Your boy done switched up on you. Con like Your boy done switched up on you. So this is the receipts of the first time we had our first little incident and he was popping off. And the picture in the bottom right corner is a picture of my dad sitting at the stove. I had to send him a picture because he couldn't comprehend in his mind that I was seeing about somebody. Now to everybody wondering why I'm saying something now, it's because he was going around slandering my name saying he gave me money. And he did this and that and then I ended the friendship he ain't never done nothing for me. I was the one helping him. For all of y'all saying, what's the purpose? The purpose is, it's the principality. It's certain things you don't do. And if you don't have a channel, you don't understand it. And those that do have a channel, it's just certain things you don't do. It's proper etiquette. And people. People need to be aware, especially smaller YouTubers and other people that could be used for somebody else to reach their point. And for all of y'all saying, well, this should have been handled behind closed doors. Y'all should have called. Well, everybody did try to call, but he the one dropped the first video, not us. He did. He dropped the first video. And how did I come about it again? Because he brought me up while he was there. So, hey, it is what it is at this point. And still, instead of getting on the phone and talking to people, he called somebody that wasn't even there or didn't have nothing to do with the entire situation and then had her to go live and ad advocate for him and speak out for him. Why not speak out for yourself and call everybody and just apologize, period? I'm not mad at Sam's World. I don't fault her for anything. I don't like what lips. The comments Lips was making about her son to me that was inappropriate. I'm not here for that. But I don't fault her and I'm not angry at her. <laughs>